Legend tales of a place where the booze flows freely and the stories are always entertaining. If you were bold enough to seek out such a place, head 13 miles down the Tuscan Highway to a tiny blues joint known as the Townsmith Tavern. Once there, <laughs> enjoy the ride. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to a UA production of Beer, Blues, and Bowl. Excuse me, excuse me, you can't say that. You're going to lose your family-friendly rating. You're going to corrupt the kids. B.S. A podcast that invites you to grab a cold beverage, pull up a seat, and enjoy time with friends. And here are your hosts, Howard Blues and the Mark Kidder. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Beer, Blues, and BS, the podcast that is legally obligated to tell you I'm your host, Howard Blues. And here with me, as always, my co-host, the man, the myth, the legend, the Mark Kidder. Kidder, how are you doing this week? I'm doing great, and I've got one question for you at this moment. Normally, it's how the hell are you, but who the hell signed that paperwork saying we're legally obligated to do anything? You know, I just try to spice up the intro every time, you know? It's, uh, oh, this, this is spicy. You know, they, 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 you know our, our fans, at least anyone who's following us, you know, they this is episode 10. They've had to sit through that intro video 10 times. Hmm. Like, give them something fresh right off the bat, you know, something new, something <laughs> like, ooh. So I've been trying something to, you know, ch- fresh. change it up every time. Plus, it's always interesting to see if I can make you laugh ah, with whatever uh, I come up with. So okay. it's... You know, so it's a it's a fun challenge. There we go. See, I thought that you were just you know going to start out with cheap plugs right away, and saying you know we're on Spotify right there, or perhaps iHeartRadio, or Podbean, or perhaps our brand new debut service, Pandora. All that. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're getting out there. You know. More and more places that you can find this quality program. <laughs> I was waiting for you to do the as a classic Mick Foley right there. Like you're gonna say something like, have a nice download or listen again. Or yeah. Miss, Mr. Podcast or something. Uh, you know, the better one was, you know, what to to do would be something along the lines of you know, Beer, Blues, and BS, the podcast that comes to you from right here in Bismarck, North Dakota. There we go. There I can go. live with that. I go. can I can live with that. Uh, that's a good Mick Foley. Right there. So there's a couple cheap plugs, as it were, straight off the bat. Uh, I'm doing all right. I'm thankful to make it through another week because this is really the highlight of my uh friday nights at this point is <laughs> sharing the good times with you and all of our five faithful viewers and listeners i don't know if we have that many at this point but <clears throat> yeah it's thanks. actually probably closer to nine when you consider like the five subscribers on youtube the four subscribers on Podbean. so there's at least nine okay i mean we'll take it so thanks for being there, all nine of you. Make sure you tell your friends. And if we are your friends, we already know. Thank you. <laughs> so I suppose right at the beginning of uh, this little thing that we call a show, let's discuss what we're drinking first. Because I'm thirsty. And it's kind of been one of those weeks. Next two weeks are going to be those weeks more so but you know what i'm just thirsty anyway so i have the the mystery drink right here and i decided to punish myself a little bit once again yes i have another natty light seltzer this one is not cherry flavored so it automatically doesn't suck as much 
number two, it's the house rules, allegedly. And it is a strawberry kiwi. And that means it's when strawberry and kiwi call the shots. So there's a, let me, let me size it correctly. There you go. You can see the adequately moderate, um, uh, mediocre uh, packaging here. Uh, again, a malt beverage with natural flavor. 12 full ounces of 131 calories. <clears throat> no protein in here, in case you were curious. Um, cause I certainly was not. So let's go ahead and get this thing going. So then I can get it over with the, hopefully not choking on the prickly cactus. Like last week, if you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure you go check out the uh, episode from last week. So here we go. You, you know, Kidder. Oh, what? because last week the cherry lime natty seltzer kind of just kept popping up and rearing its air, you know, ugly head the entire episode. Yes. I decided that the best title for that episode could be nothing else but Wrath of Cherry Lime. Hmm. Star Trek hmm. reference for you. I, I see that. I, I should say I hear that because I haven't actually seen it yet. Because future Kidder will have seen this, but current Kidder has not. So if you're playing the home game and you're like, what the hell are they talking about? Because I know that you're sitting there going, well, they do these every week. <laughs> well, we do them every week. Now we're talking to you from the past. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, make that 401k investment. Invest in Dogecoin. And, of course, do not ever take legal advice from us. Or financial advice. Because if you lose your shirt... That's not our fault. <laughs> so now that I said even more of that, I do have to say that the scent is like you had a couple of fresh strawberries fall into your beer. So hmm. uh, that, that nice aroma for you. Let's, let's give this thing a shot. Please don't kill me. Hmm. Do we have a an adequate sound effect for this? I, I I'm okay if we don't because I well I, I don't know what I, I guess normally I would have uh, hit the drum oh, roll. Um, sure. Sorry, sorry. Sound we department was a little sleep at the wheel. We can do that in post. <laughs> no, don't do that in post. Um, I'm not going to do that in post. <laughs> Everybody's like, what does post mean? What, what are you talking well, let, about? Let's do this, though, Kidder. We, we haven't got your uh, reaction yet, so I'm going to hit a random button on here, and we'll see if okay. I can, uh, if the sound effect machine can uh, provide the correct sound effect for uh, your, uh, for your uh, opinion on this. Will it elicit the correct response? I have Not no idea what that really. would be. <clears throat> no. I mean, that, that sounds like a fiesta in a can. This, not a fiesta in a can. No matter how many seltzery, natty, whatever's they try and put on the outside of the can. Um, I would give it a higher rating than last week, and I can't remember what I gave this pile of junk last week. This one at least tastes strawberry-y, so I can drink it. But it kind of tastes like beer smells in the cans that you've left sitting for a couple hours. Mm. Uh, your rating last week was you know what this is uh, pretty good and then exactly 55 seconds later you regretted that comment <laughs> it's interesting that I said it was pretty good I must have had a couple before that because <laughs> it, it it's not that good so yeah, it, I will give it one and a half stars out of five yeah no and I only know that it was 55 seconds because uh for those of you who watch the YouTube version, you'll notice I put up a lovely little uh, countdown thing to <laughs> put up a regret. damn time counter. <laughs> I did. Oh I did. my god! You have too much time on your hands. That's what you have. Too much time on your hands. Well, you know, I I, I like to to bring a little extra entertainment for those who uh, sit through the YouTube version. So mm. there you go. 
Okay. Uh, well, Kidder, tonight, uh, I actually said this a couple episodes ago that for episode 10, I would do a Bud Light with green olives. And if you note, those are some nice big green olives. And there's at least five of those suckers in there. That's a girthy green olive take right there. And you know what? I will give you credit for adequately filling your glass with the appropriate level of green olives. Because obviously we've been partaking in the green olive goodness for a few years now. And Mm -hmm. I know I am always disappointed when I go to a bar or restaurant and I'm feeling like I really want to enjoy my Bud Light with green olives. And a couple things happen. One, it'll be like, you mean Bud Light with olives? No, I want green olives just in case for whatever reason you have black olives or Kalamata olives or some other kind of artsy olives floating around behind the bar. Oh, okay. Or two, you get the weird look of you want olives in your beer. Okay, fine. Then, <laughs> it's about 55 seconds. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm very much not impressed with that drink. Thank you very much. Um, the other thing is when they come back to your table and set down your Bud Light olivey goodness and you get one measly freaking olive. Oh, please, sir. May I have some more olives? I would really like some more olives for my beer, please. Oh, please, sir. You want more? Hey, 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 calm down. You know, the, the olives aren't costing you anything, and it's really not costing the company a lot either. I mean, an olive is like a cent, so maybe two. I don't know. I'm not really a mathematician when it, or a financial analyst when it comes down to Kalamata olives, green olives, black olives, any of the olives, or really any other kind of financial take. So again, if you take financial advice on green olives or anything else, yeah, you can't it'd be probably us. closer to about five if cents you when you shirt. consider, you know, uh, twenty-eight olives in a jar. At about four dollars a jar, it's it's probably in the five cent range. But yeah, not that you counted or anything like that. Again, somebody who has a little bit of time on your hands, or perhaps well, the internet. Uh, I didn't count, Kidder. I just happened mm. to have the nutritional facts label on my jar of olives facing me, oh. and uh, it just happens to say serving size is one olive, about twenty. Was it twenty eight servings? So I mm. I estimated here and there. So. <clears throat> okay but but you know kidder uh, so so you're bringing up some like mistakes that that can be made with like making a proper bud light and all some might even say that they're like a like a penalty a foul mm-hmm, and this brings mm-hmm. me up to something um i have some i have some qualms about the last episode but uh okay. instead, of, instead of uh just me explaining um I decided. <laughs> <laughs> it's Howard the Riff. Son That's of right. a bitch. Son of a bitch. There Howard, he the ref. Is. Howard the Ref is here. He's to, back uh, from the dead. Jesus. Call some penalties on uh, last week's episode. Because uh, the first thing is, Kidder, at the end of the episode, you raced through all of our good nickname stories. You like. Didn't spend the time. So much wasted material. So I'm giving you two minutes in the box for improper storytelling. <laughs> Is the opposite of embellishing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, okay. All right. The other, what else you the other, got? Come at me, bro. Come at the other me. One, the other one that I have to call you on is you talked about your specific nicknames. You asked mm-hmm. Rude Boy about his. Mm-hmm. You did not pass the puck over to me and you just skipped on to the next topic so that's gonna be a five minute misconduct so that's that's because you were glitching the hell out so i didn't even know if you were in the game or not so that one's on you i'm calling i'm calling uh a damn reverse i'm throwing the card down throwing sorry come on sorry huh huh Huh? howard the ref 
it's final to the box with you. <laughs> <laughs> I got a box for you right here. Yeah. No, I, I, I honestly was, uh, it was one of those things. It's like you, you, you flashed through the Blues Brothers story and there's such good material there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd be remiss mm -hmm. if we didn't talk about it a little bit. <clears throat> All right. Howard, you go ahead and tell us about your nickname. Well, or I'll get to that. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll get to it on <laughs> your time. Okay. We, listen, we got we, we to do the Blues Brothers correctly here because that has been a huge part of our identity for a long time. I thought it was just going to be another two-minute minor for delay of podcast. Listen, listen. Who's got the stripes here? Uh, uh, uh. If if I drink enough of these seltzer things, I'm gonna be seeing stripes going with the static that I'm drinking. <laughs> like drinking television static. Have I ever mentioned that? If I yeah. have, well, it needed to be mentioned again. Continue. <laughs> so you did mention uh, we've been the Blues Brothers since high school. It mm -hmm. started our senior year. But it was not for a talent show. It was a lip sync contest. I mean, it's kind of a show of talent or lack thereof. Yeah. But it was also uh, part of Spirit Week. And it was for Rockstar Day. And you and I have got to be the only people who show up on Rockstar Day as the Blues Brothers. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't probably be viewed as a rock group. And when I say that we showed up, I'm not just saying that, like, yeah, we put on a suit and tie and sunglasses and a hat. We had it down to the tattoos on the knuckles. We paid attention to which wrist each brother wore. We even knew at that time who took off what because, uh, like, Jake can take off his glasses because he does that in the films. Mm -hmm. Elwood can take off his coat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we kind of stuck to that. And we stuck in character uh, throughout that whole day. And, and as much as it sucked, because, uh, well, you had to wear the hat and I had to wear mm -hmm. the glasses. Everybody's like, oh, take off your glasses. Nope. <laughs> yeah. But we did compete in the uh, lip sync contest. I like to say that we got fourth. <laughs> so, but the. Uh, the because the thing about it was we didn't we didn't place we should have um but the the thing about it was and i told kidder this when we agreed to do the lip sync contest we did you know a whole medley of the blues Brothers songs but i told him that we stood a good chance especially with all the work we put into it unless two things happened one was a guy dresses in drag and two if somebody humps the stage floor, the act that took first place did both of those things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, and we were limited by time and things like that. We had so much fun doing that act that a couple months later, uh, we performed it again for Dakota Stage. And that one was for a, a fundraiser. Uh, and we had fun with that. We extended the act including adding uh police sirens for us to run into um and things and from there that's where we got the wedding gig which was great because i got a call from some stranger who asked you know hey do, do you guys do weddings and i had to to fill them in we're a lip sync act <laughs> you know we don't <laughs> actually sing the songs although you and i usually were singing the songs with the act yeah, because because why why not right was to microphones that weren't plugged in um but, so we were just like yeah, a regular she, national touring band right so we agreed to do this wedding and get paid for it and we showed up at the uh that's the ram coda i think was where we were at and we had to get we had to let the dj know that we were there but we didn't want to get spotted because this was kind of a surprise thing. So Kidder and I uh, went dressed in trench coats, 
covering the suits with all of our props in the briefcase that we usually carried with this act and pretended that we were businessmen checking out the conference room because we had a meeting there the next day. Gave Which the DJ perfect. the signal. Perfect sense. Nobody will that, suspect that. it. <laughs> nobody. Nobody would suspect a thing. No. Nah. Two teenagers showing up in trench coats at your wedding? No. Nah. no nobody's going to think a thing. And uh, we went and changed in a coat closet. <laughs> and the music hit. We ran on to the dance floor. We did the whole act. Uh, and then the groom continually after the act, he was he he was thrilled with it. Uh, continually tried to get us to go up to his room for drinks, and we, of course, were like, um, "No, we're like in high school." <laughs> hey, bro, thank you, but we're too we're too young to do that yet. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But we did make money doing it. So, uh, yeah. So, I, I thought that was worth telling. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, I... again, there's that. Also, Kidder, I'm giving you a two-minute penalty for abusive official. Because I do believe you called me short and fat in the course of telling that story last week. So that's an additional two. <laughs> Purely implication. I was dead <laughs> at the time. It wasn't me. So, as for the Howard Blues, so the Blues comes over from me being Jake Blues. Howard comes over from when you and I first started hanging out and when we were playing Halo. Mm -hmm. And back in the original Halo, if you did not have an account on the Xbox that you were playing on, it would just assign you a random H name. And so... Playing multiplayer, it was actually at your birthday party. Mm -hmm. uh, we were having a big LAN party, and because I didn't have an account on Kidder's machine, it assigned me the random name of Howard. Does it make sense? Yeah. And uh, that that's when I met a lot of your friends, a lot of the NDWF crew. So... NDWF? Oh, my God, this is such a good time. Right. We'll talk about and, NDWF later. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that was most of their first time meeting me. And, of course, as we're playing, eventually the question, who's Howard? Who's this Howard guy? <laughs> Who on earth is Howard? And it stuck. And I am still, to some of those guys, Howard. I, mm -hmm. I think there's even a couple of them that it was only, like, recently that they realized, like, wait, your name isn't actually Howard? Like, yeah, no. yeah. Um, and then, of course, I helped out with NDWF for a little bit, and that's hence <clears throat> Howard the Ref. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but yeah, but that was that was worth, uh, as I said, telling because, as I said, for some people, I'm still Howard, uh, mm -hmm. which is actually is kind of cool. It uh, was actually the name of my great grandfather was Howard, mm -hmm. so I wear the name with pride. So. The legend lives on, both with your grandfather and Howard the Ref. Mm -hmm. This lives on. Yeah. So, speaking of refing, Kidder, yes. have you been following all of the drama with the Washington Capitals and the New York Rangers this week? No. Although I've seen some posts uh, in the like five minutes I've been on social media of <clears throat> uh, so-and-so needs to be suspended and so-and-so should be thrown out of the league and, and this and that. The only thing that I have figured it to be was some chippy and um, interesting um, fighting or action, but no idea. Okay. Um, and I'm going to probably get some names wrong on this. Um I'm just gonna throw that out there. I'm sorry. I follow neither of these teams. So well, who would want to? Just, I mean, seriously. Well, I can see a reason for the for the Capitals, and we'll get to that. Okay, okay. But we need we of course need to make sure that we mention that you know the superior Colorado Avalanche <clears throat> kicking ass, and the game starts in five 
minutes. So I'll be giving you the live updates from six weeks in the past. <laughs> yeah. Why not? So so uh, the Capitals and the Rangers played on Monday. And in that game, there was a bit of a scrum uh, down at the Rangers goal. Um, and the, the, the big offending player here uh, is Tom Wilson of the Capitals. In this kind of scrum, he will end up, or he will sucker punch um, New York Rangers uh, Pavel Buchnich in the back of the head and starts basically a, a scrum. Um, but the thing is, he not only just sucker punches him in the back of the head, it's his head is on the ice. So this is literally punching a guy's head into the ice. Oh, okay. Which, you know, is not good. That's just dirty play. Someone's going to get hurt doing that. Mm-hmm. The scrum happens. Uh, New York Rangers winger, um, can't think of his first name. I don't have it here, um, but Panarin is his last name. Jumps in to try and stop it. In the, that scrum, his helmet will come off. Wilson will throw him to the ice, not once, but twice, just ragdolling him to the ice. Pavin will end up, or Preveran will end up injured. He's done for the season. Hmm. Um, and Wilson will get a 5 and 10 and gone for the rest of the game. So this is where it gets interesting. So this is where a lot of these posts you're seeing where Tom, there's a, a lot of outcry for, for Tom Wilson to be banned. Some saying for the rest of the season, some saying indefinitely, because this was very much intent to injure somebody. Um, and this is, I mean, he just took out the Rangers star player. Gone for the you know rest of the season. The board of player safety comes back with a ruling that Tom Wilson will have zero game suspended and will have a five thousand dollar fine for his actions. Wow, because I'm sure you That's know that'll it. pay the medical bills for uh, this the other guys that needed to get treated. Right, you know, so so that comes out. The New York Rangers clearly upset by this. Uh, someone from their management will send a letter to the commissioner and publicly basically calling for the head of player safety to be fired over this. The commissioner yeah, absolutely. Does, does not like this, does not like a club basically attacking an executive of the NHL. They will fine the New York Rangers $250,000 over that. <laughs> so, so let me get this straight. So they were mad. Uh, obviously, the players and the team were mad because their two of their players got injured in some form, and there was one injured. Injury. One could have been injured. Okay. Luckily, um, Pavel Butnovich, he's fine, and he'll come up later here. <laughs> so okay, well. And then, so the team protests, and then because they protest, the big shots in the higher-up management go, <laughs> well, we'll just take more of y all of your money. That makes perfect yeah. sense. Hmm. Yeah. So what makes this story interesting is these two teams played again on Wednesday. So you had the incident Monday night, Tuesday night, Comes out, no suspensions for Tom Wilson. They're going to play again Wednesday night. And what happens is it starts off, Kidder, the game starts off with a three, you know, with a six man brawl oh, right sweet. off the bat. The goalies the actually get in there? Uh, the goalies did. Oh, man. But just, just to give you an idea, Kidder, and it's worth going and looking, uh, you can find the highlights of this. In the first period alone, both teams will rack up over a hundred penalty minutes. That's good. I mean, <clears throat> you're going back to like mid to late two thousands fighting Sioux minutes right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there there are pictures of that bo of both boxes, and they're pretty full. Um, Pavel uh, Buknovich, he'll get actually a, a 
a five and ten um, for a jumping cross check hmm. into a Capitals player. I mean, bloody's the guy. It's a gruesome hit. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Chara, who is now playing with the Capitals, oh, uh, Zeno Chara's over there minute. now. Yeah, he's hmm. going to get a ten minute misconduct during a commercial break because he skated over to the Rangers bench and challenged. Um, I forget which player, but a player that they there was kind of a standing kind of call out fight when Chara was on the Bruins, and this guy played for another team, and so Chara tried to reignite that one, uh, and they just they just gave him a ten minute misconduct and sent him off. So <clears throat> disappointing. Yeah, mm. crazy crazy first period. All that said, um, I think you know a former UND. Fighting Sioux alumni, mm-hmm. although not your favorite player, does play for the Capitals. Uh, one TJ Oshi. Um, he was actually Wednesday night was his first game back. Uh, his father recently passed away, mm-hmm. uh, so he was coming back from the funeral, um, and he would score a hat trick in Wednesday's game, yep. um, which was a very emotional thing for him. Yeah, first absolutely. game played since the loss of his dad. So, um, condolences to uh, TJ Oshi. You know, I, I know that some, you know, oh, she's a great player. Unfortunately, when he was at UND, I, I think he kind of squandered his time there. And some people are a little bitter about that. They feel like he, he could have done more mm-hmm. when he was part of off that team. Yeah. Um, but still, the loss of one's father, that's always a big deal. So, Oh, yeah. But, and uh, yeah, us, that's here, the, us that's, here at that's the, the Triple ongoing B. Saga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the ongoing saga, yeah. Uh, of course, us here at the Triple B extend our heartfelt condolences to uh, the Oshis and uh, all the extended friends and family. And uh, this uh, difficult time, as uh, I'm sure that it can be. So, uh, yeah, with what you were alluding to, um, I st- remember the couple uh, instances in which I was not an Oshi fan. Of course, uh, number one when uh, another two of the uh, hockey players were in uh, detained or otherwise under arrest and in the back of uh, squad cars. And uh, I believe he was involved with the incident there, uh, whether it was at the bar or at the frat, but uh, opened up the squad car door and then uh, three or four of them took off. (laughs) Obviously, everybody knew who they were, so it's not like you were going to get away with anything there. Uh, and then number two, when he came to uh, visit, uh, I believe Pat Sweeney was still on the commentary at that point for the Sioux broadcasts, and <clears throat> uh, this is after Oshi had left, or right after, I think, and, uh, oh, came back and, yep, stumbled up into the press box, and Oh, God, we are on TV. He was right in the middle of somebody else's interview and sat down right behind where they were sitting and cup in hand. And, and yeah, not impressed at that point in uh, his career. However, I give him props because number one, he realized how dumb all of that was. Number two, he made something of himself and has become such a top tier hockey player since then. Um, Number three played with the Olympic team, did some wonderful things with the Olympic team and uh, at during the Olympics and uh, number four, five, whatever I'm on. uh, He's really turned into a locker room leader from Of course, the articles I've seen, the interviews that uh, I've caught bits and pieces of and uh, video when you see him out on the ice. Uh, And I think he's even excelled even more since he went, he traded from the Blues over to the Capitals. So, T.J. Oshie, when you check this out, giving you some props. So, there you go. Bringing it full circle there, Jake. (laughs) <laughs> yeah so no i it's it's been interesting i've kind of been following this 
Capitals Rangers story. Not that I follow these two teams, but it it has brought up a lot of questions about fighting in hockey, you know, and um, they it's kind of clear to see that fighting has gone down in hockey. There's not as many of the line brawls and the the big fights that you would find if you kind of go and watch clips from 80s, 90s, even 70s. Like that has kind of fallen out of favor with the sport a little bit. Not that it's gone. And I'm kind of okay with that. You know, I I have often said I don't mind a little roughing, you know, because to me that's just like, hey, we're 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 being serious about this. We're we care. I can I can get behind that. I'm not always the biggest fight fan. Um because I've also seen fights that I get the idea is like, oh, I'm going to have this fight and we're going to rally my team back from losing. And it's like, you know, <laughs> you're losing by three. Did you? Did you right. You See, know, I, I, on the other hand, am a, a, a proponent for the fights. And I, I always enjoy watching a game and a damn good fight breaks out. Uh, kind of like uh, us going to the Bismarck Bobcats games, and they end up with 12 people in the box <laughs> because they beat the crap out of the other team. Um, you know, and, and then the, just like you said, there's those moments that uh, really try and emphasize of, hey, we should, you know, try and get our crap together and be more of a, a player because, I don't know, we suck right now, so get it together. Again, the three goals <laughs> losing. I don't know if it's really going to give the old NHL 95 um, stamina boost, but you know what? It'll still make the game a little bit interesting. Um, same thing, you know, I feel when it gets chippy like that and they're sitting there hacking away at each other's sticks and, you know, going at it. Well, you know what? Just beat the crap out of that person who's trying to pick a fight the whole night send them off there we go on to the next thing and you know focus on winning the game yeah well speaking of fights kidder oh huh yes. um I, I i know neither of us really follow aew mm -hmm. but there, there's a little bit of controversy going on and so you know me I enjoy a good controversy. Mm -hmm. So um, they had... Is this due to blood and guts? Yes. They had their okay. big blood and guts match this week. Um, and it, it's basically a war games match, but they can't call it war games because WWE has the rights to the name war games, not necessarily the rights to the concept of the match. But basically it's... Two rings inside a giant cage and two teams, five people per team. They alternate entrances, so kind of goes like that. And um, they did blood and guts as either you win by either uh, submit or surrender. So no pins, no DQ. You either submitted your opponent or they said, I quit. Hmm. Basically. Okay. Um, from everything I've heard, I haven't seen the match. Um, I might try and find it, uh, find a clips of it and such. I haven't seen it. Um, but they had some problems with it at the end. Like, from everything I'm hearing commentator-wise, damn good match. Nothing but good things up until the end. And apparently at the end, they had one last commercial break. And when they came out of that commercial break, Chris Jericho and MJF, who are two of the kind of the leaders of these two teams, are all of a sudden on top of the cage. Hmm. Okay. And, and, what, and what was hard to see, they they in during the commercial, in the little tiny picture in picture window, uh, you saw uh, Tully Blanchard attack the ref, get the keys, open the cage. They got out and climbed to the top. But if you didn't have picture in picture, because you're in like Canada, um, you didn't see that. So all of a sudden, the two guys are on top of the cage, and you're like, "How? How'd this happen?" 
Hmm, okay. So they're up there, and MJF is threatening to throw Chris Jericho off the cage. And the commentators are playing it up. You know, it's that, oh my, it's concrete. He's going to throw him off onto the concrete. You know, like really playing up just how dangerous this is. Mm-hmm. MJF's about to do it. Chris Jericho's team surrenders. And MGF throws Jericho off the cage anyway. Hmm. This is where the controversy <clears throat> happens. Because when they cut over to Jericho crashing down, it is very clear that he is crashing onto a or landing onto a crash pad and not the concrete. Okay. And so this has gotten uh, some mixed reviews because some people are really upset that they, and I'm going to pull up, I think I have a photo of it so you can see. Like, they tried everything they could to make this look like this was some dangerous platform that he's landing on. Mm-hmm. But it's it's clearly, like, some plywood, you know, on top mm-hmm. of boxes with what looks to be, like, a foam diamond plate mm-hmm. look to it. Yeah. And it's not, it's not as dangerous as it was made out to be. And so this is where you get in the controversy. Mm-hmm. Some fans are like, eh, it's okay. This stuff happens. This is, you know, you, ha- you have to do it safely. And other people are looking at it and going, you know, this is stupid. Mm-hmm. So it looks kind of it, dumb. <laughs> it, it, it does. I, you know, and I mean, I can't blame them. You know, if you're Jericho at his age, do you really want to fall off a cage onto concrete? Right. No. No, but at the same time, this isn't, you know, the best look, Mm -hmm. you know, I think you and I, we've watched enough WWE where they throw a guy off a high place. He lands on the black cloth draped Mm -hmm. (laughs) protective stuff. And we all know, like, that's there to kind of really break the fall. It's Mm -hmm. it's going to hurt, but it's not as bad as concrete or a hard floor. But because it's kind of black clad, you can kind of be forgiving of what it is. Where like this, there was clearly an attempt to make you believe that this was something that it wasn't. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like when they're you know that steel ladder, and it's like that's a wood ladder, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but so I don't know. Any thoughts? On this, I know I'm kind of, you know, I, I know you haven't seen it, but just your take on hmm. the kind of <clears throat> well glimpse and hearing of this. I mean, just from that, the photo that you have, just looking at that, I mean, you can tell that it's not sheet metal, even even how the pieces come apart. I, I can only imagine how it looked when he landed on it would be even worse. I I think I would rather have it where he or whomever lands on it kind of like what the WWE does. Like, you know, there, there's something there. Maybe even put a table in there, right? Like, so it breaks part of the fall and then has the cushioning underneath. You know, I, I could get behind that, but I, I always think that it's super cheesy Whenever it's, oh, this is the strongest, and he's got that chair that is clearly steel, and he's going to break him in half. And then, whack. Okay, the chair just folded like the cookie sheet that you use mm-hmm. from the cookie gnomes. And I'm like, no, no. So I think uh, had they, like I said, just been honest with the spot, it would have gone over better, but <clears throat> I don't know. I guess uh, not really a fan, you know. Truthfully, I, I haven't watched much of any of the AEW stuff aside from the first episode. Just I watched the full episode and uh, for their first uh, debut episode, and I'm sure it's gotten a lot better, but I just 
wasn't a huge fan of the presentation. Um, it's the same reason why I didn't like WCW back in the day. Um, it just has the same feel to me, and I just didn't like it. So there's that. Um, the other uh, interesting thing about uh, Chris Jericho on Sirius XM, just as a side note, he's been hosting a bi-weekly show, The Rock of Jericho, and tonight was the debut of the final episode. Hmm. So, I don't know what he's doing, but uh, no more Rock of Jericho for a while. Uh, he said he took a break uh, like 2000 when they started doing it until mm, it's been a few years, four years ago, maybe. But yeah, just a couple little things and note there for you. So yeah, and this the ending of this match, at least from what I'm hearing, is supposed to write him off of TV for a while. Hmm. So um, it it's, it kind of sounds like he's off to do something. Maybe Fozzie's gonna tour again here for a bit or something, or he's just gonna that. rest up for a bit, you know? Right. So. Um, sounds like, yeah, he's kind of stepping away from a few things to focus on other things for a bit. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that there's a couple other so, things Kinder, that we want to talk about tonight. Yeah, I was going to say, I am, uh, I'm seeing this very tempting note here in the, uh, the, our run sheet it says that you have a surprise preview. Would I'm you excited. like? Would you like to talk surprise preview or would you like to hold that for another couple minutes and wait for the surprise to be even bigger? Oh, because we, no, we could talk hockey for a second since we didn't get to talk about your Colorado avalanche a couple minutes ago when we discussed the fighting. Sure. If you want to talk hockey for a little bit, I'm noticing that I'm uh, a little light on the beer, so I might... Pour me a second. Yeah, I'm out uh, as well, but um, I'll just do that after the show because I'm enjoying just hanging and having fun here. So, a couple things of note. Um, your Colorado Avalanche, uh, unfortunately, the other night, uh, two nights ago, did not pick up the victory against the Sharks. It was... Uh, three, two loss. So, uh, that was unfortunate, but the abs beat the sharks twice before that, the, the two games leading up to that. Now tonight, your Colorado avalanche travel to Los Angeles to play the quote unquote Kings who are this, uh, time, um, uh, this time of the year, I should say this season, not going so well. They're 21. 24 and six uh, game again, starting down there in the old Los Angeles. So uh, unfortunately my, uh, my stats did not load for all of the, the players and stuff, but I do have good news and that is the West division standings, the, the Western division here. So, Number one in the West, Vegas. Four games remaining, and they uh, have 76 points. Oh, oh, make some noise over there so you can watch this pour. No, you're not going to make some noise? Oh, you muted yourself. I see how this is. So you're watching me pour your damn beer on mute, you son of a bitch, because I'm not going to go and get another one. Fine, fine. Fine, fine, you whatever. Fine. <sighs> yep. yep, fine. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. You know, my uh, my, my right. little guy, little little side tangent here. Mm -hmm. Um, he has started doing this because I did it once where I took a drink and did the whole. Mm, mm -hmm. so now he does it like if i'm around like he'll drink like his milk and he'll just go ah. mm. 
cute. Thank way, you. way to teach him. Way to teach him. I try. <laughs> I try. All right. So it it now changed. Uh, uh, it's changed to a play by play. So you know what? Th this is pretty disappointing. I'm just gonna just gonna say that. Um, so let's let's just discuss number two, Colorado Avalanche in the West. Five games left in the regular season for the 2020-2021 season, and we have uh, had 30 regulation wins, and we are sitting at 72 points on the season. So very, very happy about that. Now um, I want to get, get here's my thing here. Hold on. Go live. That's what I want. Go live. Live, damn it. Uh, we're sitting at 0-0 uh, zero, zero here. Oh, oh, no. Hold on. Hold on. We are two and a half in. The Kings have scored a goal. It is now 0-1. It's very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. Uh, and it's it's frozen, you know. So there's also that. But oh, oh, now we're now we're going. Okay. So aside from that, you know what? We're finishing out the season. Uh, of course, from our viewing standpoint, really excited. I'm hoping, 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 hoping that uh, the team really pulls it together, does something fantastic here in the short upcoming postseason and uh maybe we can continue on to one of them their cups so also uh, i'm sure that you were taking a look at uh at my my jersey this evening i don't know if you got a chance to see that but new addition to the uh to the old uh, uh jersey collection so i got that and wouldn't be complete without. I can't hey, it says Kidder for anyone who's on the uh, a service that's not YouTube. The uh, jersey a properly. That's not YouTube. Yeah, uh, but it it's. But are they 13. are they even able to see it? Because you because you were talking. Are they what? even able to see it? <laughs> they they saw it before I started talking. Okay. Say something. I okay. hope so. Say something. Well, I, I said something. Now, do I have to say something again? Or, or are you going to say something? So let me turn around because my, my, my screen's like this big. So hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Okay, now I can see myself a little bit. So there, there's the lighting. There you go. The 13 Kidder, red, white, and blue. There we go. It's the military appreciation. This patch also, the... Uh, the U.S. flag, and uh, on the other side, an interesting point is you can uh, put a service member whom you salute right on there. Put their their name and their rank. I think reading upside down. Mm, yes, that's uh, right on there. So, or your reasoning for for wanting to salute them. So there's that. Um, it uh, comes straight from the Altitude Authentics uh, shop at Ball Arena and was personally, or not personally, but personalized from the shop. So it was done correctly with the old captain badge on the, on the shweta. So only took a month and a half to get here. So happy hmm. to have it. Add it to the collection. I was gonna, I was gonna say, Kidder, this is also a New Jersey. I bought it purely for the joke at the beginning of this episode. Twenty bucks <laughs> on Amazon. <laughs> Twenty bucks on Amazon. Did yeah. you know? Do, do we have the rights uh, for them to pay us? Do they have the rights to be on this show? That's the you real know, question. Could, I was gonna say we could get an affiliate link, and and allow people to buy stuff that we use on this show, but which, which for the most part right now is this Jersey, which actually is very comfortable. I'm not going to lie. Kind of yeah. You are used to being in the zebra skin. So I'm sure that it's just like being at home. Actually, <clears throat> Howard, the ref was never given a ref shirt. 
Never had. Oh, one. it was the ref shirt. No, did, I didn't. Did, did I didn't. you not wear the ref shirt? No, no. Hmm. Which is part of why there's some there's some problems with NDWF because people didn't realize I was the referee. <laughs> because that's where I didn't have stripes. <laughs> Hmm. Well, now when we come out of retirement and we do NDWF again, guess what? <laughs> I'm still got permanently the retired. <laughs> oh, well, that sounds yeah. like a damn weak ass cop out, if you ask me. Really? I think the lesion yeah. in my spine says I get to, you know, be out of it. You're a ref. It's not like you do anything. <laughs> Listen, we we referees are fragile people. One good bump and we're out for a good 20 minutes. Yeah, I know. I know. It's true. It mm -hmm. just You just decided to keep that theme going over the years. <laughs> <laughs> so, fun fact for you. The uh, Los Angeles Kings just uh, drew a penalty for too many men. Such a frustrating penalty to take. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we've stalled enough, and I suppose at this juncture, we will share the preview of what we're working on. Would you like to hear the preview? I'm all See ears. See the preview. You're all ears? No, I mean, it looks like all glasses to me at the moment. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm zooming in because your box is kind of small on my screen here. Oh, well, uh, let me get closer to the screen then. And say, are you ready? <laughs> Score! <laughs> Miko Rantanen! Woo! I believe that's... Uh... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I believe that's his 30th on the season, but uh, he could be wrong. So, I have two photos for you. And uh, they come to us direct from our friend, the local geek. Hmm. He is uh, a proud supporter of the Triple B, has enjoyed listening to the Triple B. And we thank him and all of you for your patronage of bringing us with you, listening or watching this uh, train wreck of a show. So... Obviously, he's very much uh, into our segments on what's on tap. And so he, he sent me a text, a couple texts, and he's like, hey, I love the on tap. What's on tap? And I've got something I'd like you guys to try out. So he sends me, number one, here's, here's a picture. Okay. Of one of the beverages that is currently uh, finishing its brew, and here is number two, Safety First. Yeah. And uh, for those of you who are listening, <clears throat> make sure you check us out on YouTube so then you can see this wonderful moment of the tease. Uh, so he is currently working on those two brews, and he already has one of the two brews in bottles. He's got a couple of them ready to go for us to try on Triple B, do the old taste test and the review, talk about it, have some fun. And the other one, well, that one's still in development, but you know what? It's, it's almost done uh, fermenting. So uh, I'd tell you a little bit about uh, what they are because he gave me a sneak peek as to what uh, those two two items are but you know what just gonna have to wait until we actually have the bottles in hand and can do the old salute and try them out test them out just like we always like to do with uh, reading the fun facts on the bottle or just discussing the uh, the old tastes you know that that's that's Great. You know, it's great to see that we have such a good supporter, such a good friend who is providing to the content of this show, unlike a certain individual from Indiana. <laughs> and there, ladies and gentlemen, your weekly poke at the gentleman from Indiana or lack thereof. 
Yes. In the gentleman. That's still definitely a poke. <laughs> gentleman, that's a loosely used term at this point. Yeah. That's okay. Next week, I'll just call him a scallywag. Ah. Yeah. It's a good thing you didn't have to wait till next week because you just did. <laughs> It's a twofer. <laughs> I know. You get a freebie. So mm -hmm. um, now that we have the surprise preview, and I mean, I'm super excited. Not only a friend of ours wants to give us some beer, or at least uh, you know have it promoted on the show. I don't know if he's selling it, but we'll make it worth his while. Let's be honest here. <clears throat> um, and then number two, likes the show. So very, very, very happy. Uh, when we, when we look at, uh, the triple B on Facebook, cause of course, make sure that you're a fan of us on Facebook. If you would pull up the triple B right there, click the thumbs up, make sure you like us. Maybe you came across a certain post and this of course was not today or yesterday it was you know six ish weeks ago but maybe you happen to come across this little little dandy of a post now uh, uh of course i can't uh, read it because it's uh, you know backwards and i'm looking right at my screen but uh when you're actually looking at it you know over halfway through the week and even closer to the next episode with your favorite good brothers at b cubed or the triple b now kind of noticed a couple things we really don't have any fan feedback or interaction or conversation it's very disappointing tried i i i, I want to talk to the people i want to hear from the people you know what i mean so you know what well i went ahead and uh added a little comment on there <laughs> can you can you read can you read the uh, the comment there jaco it says one like to this post and we'll have a beer and so <laughs> how many likes how many likes are on there that would be one so this beer is for you thank you this one right here this beer I'm glad that Which you... is Howard's second of the night. That's right. Howard's up two to one over Kidder tonight. Well, how, how do you know how many drinks I had before we started this train? No, 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 no. Pre gaming doesn't count. Pain train. Oh, okay. You, know, you, don't, you don't count all the goals you shoot in during warm ups. That doesn't count. No, it's two to one. You sure we can't switch that rule? I mean, that seems kind of fair for us. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, you know, I, I kind of want to go grab another beer, but I kind of don't because then I have to get up, and then we can't, you know, continue talking. I mean, you would continue talking, but I, I would continue talking. Who knows what I would say? It's probably a lot like you did about me last week. You know, you say that, it, it, I, Kidder. I'm picking up. A little lack of trust, just a little, a little <laughs> lack of the trust. Because lack, cause lack you get up, of trust. You leave. I say nothing but nice things or promote the show, and you come back and always feel like I've said vile lies and slander. Hey, future Howard, can you add the uh, point from last week's episode in right here, right, right here, please? Just, just throw that in. Thanks. Which point and are now, you talking about? Oh, you know, those, those lies and slanders, slanders mm. comments. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. Future Howard, I don't think is going to, uh, going to be up for that. Maybe. But if, if he has enough time or gets drunk enough, maybe it'll happen. So, uh, I, I see something about, uh, the old shotgun blues. And now when I see that, I think about a couple different things. Number one, of course, shotgun blues, Elwood, yeah. Um, there's that, or perhaps a shotgun while you're listening to blues, because every good blues song, 
needs a shotgun nearby. I mean, why not? Or it's something completely different. So, what do you say, Howard? So, so I wanted to, to share this with you. Um, a couple episodes back, I uh, mentioned uh, one of my current favorite bands to listen to, um, and that's Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band. Yes. Well, uh, I had a video come up from his feed in uh, on YouTube, and I wanted to share it with you, Kidder, because I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, so here we go. Pull this up. And uh, enjoy. This is, as I'm waiting for it to pop up there, this is Reverend Peyton playing me. A shotgun guitar. Sweet. So a guitar made out of a shotgun. Hot damn! So, I'll link in for everybody else into the show notes. If you want to see that for yourself, uh, go go check it out. It's 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 pretty cool, um, especially when he actually shoots it. Yeah. So yeah, that's good. I will say uh, I've so. had a personal experience with a shotgun and musical instruments. However, the shotgun was a mic stand. Double, actually two double barrel shotguns, if I remember correctly. That'd be with Big Dead Rich and the Texas Hippie Coalition. <clears throat> yeah, that that was good. I introed them uh, when they were in Bismarck here. Uh, gave them the old welcome, everybody. Check it out. It's... Uh, the Texas Hippie Coalition. And yeah, got to speak into the microphone, son. And it was, you know, basically staring down a double barrel shotgun. And then, of course, the stands were, you know, the other shotguns, like I said. So it was a very interesting, very interesting microphone. There's actually a picture of me on Facebook of me going, Something, uh, something to that effect of like, look at this freaking thing. So, yeah, I like your video. That's good. Yeah. Well, and as I said, I, cause I talked about them in that episode. It was episode seven. I said, they're a bluegrass band. They're a lot of fun. They kind of have a, an interesting sound. Um, the, that uh, we were having a little bit of feedback or in kind of glitch of sharing the video. Um, but if you do watch, the last few because it's only a 45 second long video uh he breaks down laughing at the end hmm. just at how ridiculous the whole thing is and so um it, it just just really cool i uh i got a kick out of it so um yeah as i said i'll put i'll put a link to it in the show notes uh for those who are listening on one of the various podcast services uh those of you who are on watching us on youtube you got to see it for yourself whoa Whoa. And of course, Whoa. the interesting thing is I think there was a little bit of a kick there from that shotgun. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Be here for <clears throat> not much longer. I see something about clip art. What, uh, what do you say about this clip art? That wasn't me. That I didn't put anything about clip art in the shirt. No. 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 I, I got nothing on clip art. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. well, I thought you put down the clip art. It was not me. And I know it was you, who's, you lying bastard. Who's putting stuff in our run notes? Hmm. 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 Interesting. Hmm. Because hmm. no, I, hmm. I don't have anything about clip art. Hmm. It's a good straight face that you got over there. Trying to hide your, you, you your know, thieving you know, lies. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I'm I'm gonna guess mm -hmm. it is. Um and now I'll definitely have to put it in as the behind the curtain. So here's your glimpse behind the curtain of behind the curtain. <laughs> I think what I meant to put was clickbait, and I was gonna share that uh screenshot I took <laughs> of the Mike Tyson video. <laughs> so this damn show is off the rails. I mean, not that we were on the rails to begin with, but I mean, come on. Oh, man. 
Oh, that that would be my guess is that it's really just a really good typo. And <laughs> I thought you had some crazy thing about clip art. I was I was intrigued actually. It's funny that you were waiting for me to bring some kind of interesting thing, and it was it was you all along. It was, but I didn't know. That that's my guess. Uh, if you want to know what we're talking about, check out behind the curtain. You know that little thing I put at the end of the show. I did. Which is usually something we people. record before the show or after I the show. I did it for the Rock. I ran over Stone Cold. Uh, well, we now have a confession of who ran over Stone Cold. I'm mm -hmm. sure the statute of limitations isn't past that. Oh, it definitely is. Because remember, that was Rikishi. He took ownership, and he's he's uh, been tried for it. So, <clears throat> done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the that was the storyline that ended Rikishi's career. Yeah, pretty much. Just, just, just. Mm-hmm. And that brings us to pretty much the end of the show. I was going to say, Kidder, we have been talking for quite a while. It might yeah. be time to wrap this thing up. I suppose. Would you like me to rush through this a little bit? Or would you like me to take a moment while we take this quick time out for the Avalanche versus the Los Angeles Kings for a Kings two-minute minor or potentially four-minute major or double minor? For a high stick to the face. Hmm. We'll find out after this. Oh, let's see. How about we go ahead and discuss where we are? I mean, where are we in life? Right? We're in the middle of this podcast. We're in the middle of watching this video. In the middle of needing another beer. Because that is way too deep. Without enough alcohol. So... In the meantime, make sure you check us out on Twitch as twitch.tv and join the KRDN Eyewitness Weather Now stream. We're affiliated, and that means that you can check us out on Twitch whenever you want and get the latest forecast for right here in Bismarck, North Dakota. On top of that, how about uh, everywhere that you could watch or listen to podcasts? Podbean, that's the main landing page. Plus, we're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, we're on iHeartRadio, we're on Spotify, we're now on Pandora, which is a Sirius XM affiliate, in case you didn't know. Did you know that, Howard? I did not. I shouldn't even say affiliate because Sirius XM just bought Pandora a couple years ago. So you can listen to us through the Sirius XM app because the podcasts are on there. So you know what that means? We've gone worldwide. Whoa. We're in outer space. We're on the damn satellites. We're coming through your internets and stealing your gigabits. We are tickling your ear holes with all of our auditory morsels of information. So, where I mean, we're all over the place. So make sure you check out the uh, video that we're going to play here in a second. You can email us. He is Howard at beerbluesbs.com. I am at Kidder at beerbluesbs.com. You can even email the Rude Boy. You can email Bob Giggles, the gentleman from Nebraska. And uh, you want me to say that? Should I say it? I mean, it might catch, might not. Where you're sitting there going, Alexa, play Beer, Blues, and BS, the podcast. Because why not? And make sure you click thumbs up. Or subscribe. Or follow. Or whichever the following and hearting and whatever button is on your choice of auditory or visual service to watch or listen to this program. How about also on Facebook? Make sure you check us out, like us on Facebook, because we would absolutely love, love to have you along with the show, comment and talk to us through Facebook because, well, we're on there more than what we would like. So fantastic to be able to get a hold of you. 
you can get a hold of us anytime. So thank you for being part of the Triple B with a couple of good brothers right here, bringing you another mediocre to maybe even subpar quality episode. Just on it. It's the debut of Howard the Ref. Yeah, that's, that's kind of that's kind of put us up, you know. That's why, it's it's all be, it's all because of you and Howard the Ref. That's another two minutes for abusive officials. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you abuse, you son of a bitch. <laughs> so he is Howard Blues or Jake Blues, just not the copyrighted version of it i am the man the myth the legend the mark kidder thank you for joining us right here on the triple b we hope to see you again next time or hear us again next time thanks for being part of the show we'll catch you down the road make sure your glass is always more than half half full quarter full you know keep keep it on the up and up that's what i'm saying and of course free beer tomorrow We'll catch you on down the road. You have been listening to a UA production of Beer, Blues, and BS. If you enjoyed the show, help others find out about it by rating the show or leaving a review at your podcast listening service of choice. Thanks for listening, and may your glass never be empty. UA Productions presents A Glimpse Behind the Curtain. Yeah, we're, you know, because if, if we really wanted to, you know, get all the big views, um, there are things we could do mm-hmm. with that, you know. That there, there's things we could have more clickbaity titles. Mm. We could have better thumbnails, or we're like any other YouTuber where it's you know some outrageous title. You won't believe what Kidder said this time, you know, and then it's some picture. <laughs> um, I actually saw one. Let me. Uh, let me show you. I don't know if you've seen. I do not have Pandora on the credits. So I'll open this up while you're doing that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to show you this. I, I I got this so we could talk about it on the podcast. But you know what? We'll we'll talk about it here, mm-hmm. and I'll just put it at the end. But I don't know if you've seen this ever pop up on YouTube. But it's the Mike Tyson, all for... the knockouts of the legend. Right. But look at who the opponent is. Brock Lesnar. Right. Somebody has clearly taken and photoshopped Brock Lesnar onto this thumbnail because he's a big, imposing person in order to get views. I mean, and look, 62 million views in six months. That's dumb. I mean, I'm sorry. That is That's cl- just dumb. That is click. That is clickbait. If I've ever seen one, but yeah, you know, it's like anybody who knows Brock. Le- I mean, like you see it, and it's just instantaneous. Like that's Brock Lesnar. Lesnar never fought Tyson. <laughs>